Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you again. Um, you know, I've enjoyed uh, sweet fellowship with Pastor Jason and, of course, Pastor Charles earlier as we came. And we will look forward to more fellowship. And of course, Pastor Poach and I've caught up slightly with Pastor Ramsey. And I hope throughout the conference we can get more talking, not only with the pastors, but with all of you. And we sort of feel when we come here now, we're sort of, we're all friends. And we feel at home, Alison and I, my wife, I could read Proverbs 31, and uh, I could say that about my wife. I think a pastor, uh, especially pastoring a church, needs someone, uh, a wife that is with him, whom his heart can trust. And that's one of the most important things Amen. for ministry. And you know, we've had fellowship with uh, Pastor Jason and Hannah, and, and we've just really gotten to know each other somewhat more, and we've just really enjoyed your company. You had us over for lunch, and the food was wonderful. And uh, lovely hot chilies, and I was able to sit and crunch away at them and, and eat them, and I love hot, spicy food. So thank you for your, for your uh, fellowship and uh, for your hospitality. Um, Pastor Poach mentioned something last night, that if you'd taken ill on the date of Martin Luther going to the Wittenberg Cathedral, that was 1517, October the 31st. <clears throat> well, on October the 31st, back home, our nation is meant to be leaving the European Union. Amen. I'm not speaking on that today, but um, we would appreciate your prayers because Amen. it's become very volatile. It's, we're in a very difficult position. Our government are spineless. And, and we find, especially living in, you know, we tell you guys, you know, people say, oh, we're from Ireland, and we are from the island of Ireland, but I'm an Ulster man. Yeah. Um, I'm from Northern Ireland, and Northern Ireland is trying to be sucked in to United Ireland, and that might sound okay, but when you've been living with terrorism for 40 years, no, it's not. And not only that, but sucked into a European Union. Yeah. European Union, it's Babylonian, it's right. godless, Amen. and it's global elitist. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to break free from. Right, yeah. We're having meetings there in town halls to try and get the people to take a stand. And, and we've been going around in uh, different towns trying to preach against us. And so people have then in turn come against us. But that's okay, because since God be for us, who then can be against us? Amen. And so, would you pre please pray, because the 31st of October is meant to be the leaving date. Now, that's the sacking, that's the leaving, leaving date. It was meant to be another leaving date, but now it's been pushed down to the 31st of October. And in saying that, people said when we heard the 31st of October, all over, oh, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween, and I thought, Reformation, yeah. Reformation, yeah. And, and so this could be our Reformation from the European Union. Yeah. You know, the, the, the name Europe comes from a Babylonian goddess, Europa, set at Zeus, a, a, a Babylonian worship god, and the Greek form of, of uh, Nimrod. Um, he, he disguises himself as a bull and puts her on this this Phoenician goddess or this Phoenician princess <coughs> called Europa on his back and takes her as a beautiful boon or base to a uh, Crete and then into Greece. And there he, he rapes her. And so it becomes known as the rape of Europa. And Europe comes from two different words. Op meaning as in optician to see with the eye. That means the broad eye. And you're, you're up, and Yuri's is the second one where Europa comes from, and Yuri's means the broad face of. So when we look at Europe coming from the Babylonian mysteries, it's like the Kabbalah coming out in the Talmud, yes. and, and it comes across into Europe where Israel went. I'm going off on, I'm going off on another tangent here, but stay with me. And this, this system has become uh, so demonic and global elitist that, that it, it's taken the very heart of, of, of the, our, our own government, where Westminster uh, in, in London has become like a, a, a 
what we call a borough council uh, rather than a sovereign nation. Amen. Even Irish nationalists are starting to stand up and say, hold on, our Irish government, the globalists, are taking us into this. Uh, and I disagree with many Irish, many Irish nationalists, by the way, but they are saying our government is taking us in. We're losing our Irish identity. We're losing our Irishness. We're losing everything that Ireland stood for and even that Ireland fought for. So it's very important. I would even ask you that you would allow, that you would allow yourself to have time to pray. So Europa means up by the broad face off, and what it is is where Israel went across, where Europe is today, that wilderness area. It means the broad face of the earth. That's what Europa means. The one seeing eye is over the broad face of the earth. But could I just encourage you in this? No, the all seeing eye is not over. The eyes that we need and know that are seeing is the eyes of God. Amen. Run through and through throughout the whole earth. And he is still on the throne. Amen. And he's still in charge. And we Amen. believe that he's going to give us a great deliverance. Yes. There may be many battles ahead, but we know America is in trouble too. Yeah. But you know, it's only in trouble according to man. It's not in trouble according to him. Because he's still God Amen. over all things. Yeah. Yeah. And so this morning, I just want to say it's good for us to be here. Um, Alison and I didn't expect to be here. Um, if anything, uh, we don't take, if we know we're coming here, we don't take a holiday or as you would call it, a vacation. We don't take a vacation that year from church because we were busy with church. But what happened was I was in, not expecting to come here. We were in Spain. You see, if we want to get some sun, we have to fly two hours to Spain. <laughs> and, and we were there in Spain and Pastor Jason sent me a message would you come to Tulsa this year actually Alison was sleeping in bed it was at night and I went yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning I says guess where we're going <laughs> <laughs> and so we're here uh, our, our girls Jody and Ellie and Jody's working and is at college and needs to stay there at home she's now 18 and uh, Ellie is 16 and she's in a uh, very important school year so she couldn't be here but we have been in touch with them throughout the time of being here <laughs> sort of rubbing them in a little bit look where we are they're okay Gran, their, their granny lives half a mile away so uh, she's there but it's good to be with you let's turn to the scripture shall we Amen. that's the Lord would you turn with me to Mark 13, please? I was going to preach this tonight, but I'm going to preach this morning tonight in the Lord's will. That's it. Am I preaching tonight? Coming to think of it. <laughs> or is it tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm on. Well, I'll preach the other one tomorrow then. Uh, but I'm going to preach this one this morning. Um, Mark 13, verse 33. In fact, let's go to verse. Let me just get it. Yeah, let's go to verse 32. The Lord Jesus is the speaker. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed watch and pray for you know not when the time is for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house to give authority to his servants to every man his work commanded the porter to watch watch ye therefore for you know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. That's pray, shall we? Father, we love your son. And we're grateful for the blood that he shed. For our redemption and salvation. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, your spirit lives within us. Father, we ask you now to take your word, wing it to 
to every heart, imprinted in every mind, and glorify your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your presence in our midst. And now we ask you, Father, to help us to receive the word. Not just to hear it with the ear. Not even just to understand with the intellect. To help us to receive it deep into our hearts. Thank you for your Spirit's anointing. Glorify your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to speak on a, a title. It's a strange title. It's called... The Exousia Trail. So last year when we were here, uh, Alice and I and the girls were down. We left here and we had to fly out of uh, Fort Worth. So we drove down to Fort Worth and uh, had our flight to Chicago and then on over to Northern Ireland and into Belfast. And when we were there, uh, before we had come here to the conference, we were taken around and we seen, is it the Chisholm Trail? There, there's a, a, a big life-size sort of statue of these of cattle and men on the horses and, and so on. And, and they, the, this uh, tour guide started telling us about the trail of the Chisholm Trail. So this, this morning in the Lord's Will, we want to look a little at the Exousia Trail. I think it's important. And... I'm trusting and I'm hoping that not only will we see what, because uh, even Pastor Ramsey toward the end, or especially of, of his message, he mentioned something that triggered me to bring this one yeah. <laughs> and to change this. The Lord Jesus says that he is going, talking of himself, speaking of himself, he's going to ascend into heaven. And notice what he says if you will let your eye run down to verse 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. He left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. So, for one, the Lord Jesus didn't just leave us and say, okay, see how you do and get on with it yourself. But he gave us authority, authority of the word, and the 40 in the spirit. Yes. And he says that during his absence, that we, the body of Christ, to the house of Israel, we have a task to do. That Israel in the earth has a job to accomplish. And he says to, to the men, I'm going to a far journey. He leaves his house, gives authority to his servants, every man his work. You see, it's it's good that you're coming from, I don't know where you all come from, near and far. Some of us are coming maybe days away or, or, or hours away or maybe just minutes away. But every man and woman here has a job to do. And we come to a, a localized, if you want, church setting, everyone, well, we can encourage everyone to get involved in that local assembly of the ecclesia. Get involved to spread the word. Get involved to labor. Get involved behind the pastor. Get involved to drive on the ministry. Get involved to bring people in. Get involved. And that's true. But it's bigger than that. This is bigger than that. He's saying there's a kingdom that was from a man to a couple to a family to tribal people to nationhood, to a kingdom. Yeah. And he's coming back and he's looking for something. Yeah. He's looking for fruit. Yeah. He's looking for you and I to be up and doing, to watching and praying, realizing that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Yeah. And he says that, we are to watch ye therefore, he says in verse 35, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. How many are sleeping? 
Hope not in this meeting anyhow. But how many are sleeping? How many do you know even that knows this message are sleeping? Are afraid? Are hiding their light under a bushel? How many is it that you know are sleeping and are in that comfort zone and don't want to be awakened and shaken out of it? And Jesus says, let's come in suddenly. He didn't say, I'm coming secretly, by the way. <laughs> he says, I'm coming suddenly. The only thing secret about the coming of the Lord is the day and the hour. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's like the magical wizard, you know, the wizard of all. It's off poof and everyone's gone. <laughs> didn't say that. No. We will rule and reign with him on the earth. Amen. Yeah. On the earth. <coughs> there are, there's a little word here that we need to learn. I'm sure we will. Please stay with me. There's a little word here that he uses in verse 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. He left his house and gave authority. Yes. Authority. The church in general. Look, I am a Pentecostal. <laughs> I am baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I do speak with other tongues, but I'm not a charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an ecumenizer, an ecumenical service, a manipulator. None of that. Amen. What I am is a man who's been saved by sovereign grace. Yes. Yeah. Washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost and sealed with the spirit of promise. Yeah. Wanting people to know more of the truth. Amen. Amen. The authority here, we're going to look at that word. And when we look at it, we're going to follow it throughout some of the scripture. You know, for, for, for the word power, we hear an awful lot about, oh, the power, the power, the power. Just sometimes people don't realize what, what it means. And I'm sure you good folk realize that the, the word power, um, there's two main or general words that is used in, in the Greek text for power. One is dunamis. Yes. It's dynamite. Yeah. That's where we get dynamite from. Dynamic. You know, those words come from dunamis. For, for example, when we read of the Lord uh, teaching the disciples to pray in, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And the word power is dunamis. In other words, the inherent power the, the, the dynamite, inherent dynamic power is his. Yes. Is his. Let me give you an example uh, as best I can explain this word to you. Now, if I come in here and I have a stick of dynamite <laughs> and I set it there, you know, no one wants to be around a stick of dynamite. <laughs> When it's, when it's not lit, we're pretty safe. The sick of dynamite has an inherent power. The power's there. It's in that little stick of dynamite. It's there. It's, it, it's inherent. But can you imagine if I stuck a, a stick of dynamite there? How many of you would be left sitting in your seat within the next 10 seconds? <laughs> Not too many. And I wouldn't be standing here either. The idea of dunamis is the inherent power is dynamic but needs released. Yeah. Like lighting the stick of dynamite. That's the word dunamis. So our Heavenly Father he is all the power 
And when he moves, speaking reverently of our God, when the fuse is lit, yeah. and whenever we are praying, that power is released from heaven. Yeah. And governments are shaken. Yeah. And the wicked may fall. It's the dunamis, the dynamite of God. Hallelujah. That's the idea of the word. For thine is the kingdom. I have to say, Washington, the kingdom isn't yours. Amen. London Amen. or Brussels, That's right. the yeah. kingdom isn't theirs. No. no way. Thine is the kingdom. <laughs> And the power. Yes. The power of the kingdom became known in the person of the Son. Yes. The power of the kingdom became known in the person of Christ. All who the Father is is who He is. Brother Ramsey was right. He didn't just begin at Bethlehem. He always was. Amen. Amen. He always was. He is the eternal. He is the sovereign. He is the almighty. Hallelujah. He even says it yes. to John at the Isle of Patmos. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He says he is the Almighty. Amen. Yes. So all the power that the Father is, is, and I say it with reverence, in the body of flesh of that beautiful Son. Amen. Amen. Inherent power. Think of the grace. Think of the love he had for us when he went all the way Amen. to Calvary. To redeem us. He could have, you know the song, he could have called 10,000 angels. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, he could have called more than 10,000 angels. Right. He could have spoke the word, the word and flattened the temple there and then. But he prays, thine is the kingdom, the power, the dunamis, and the glory. Listen, for a little while, until man takes over, until we have the Kabbalah and the, uh, and the Talmudic uh, 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 religion, uh, until they come and, and kill me, Father, then I'm done. Not at all. He made a show of them openly. Amen. He triumphed over yeah. them at the cross, Amen. and he rose again the third day. Yeah. That's the Christ we serve. Yeah. Amen. That's our Savior. And notice... Let me take you somewhere else with this. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 46, we will see Jesus. Notice what this says. Luke chapter 8, please. Mm -hmm. Verse 46. from Elmer, you can't find it. He says, for the Son of Man shall come in great power and glory. Someone can find it for me and let me know. Great power, great dynamic, dynamite power. When the Son of Man cometh, Pardon me, I've looked at the wrong reference. It's actually Mark 13 and 26. That's what it is. It's Mark 13, verse 20. For the Son of Man is a man taken up for a journey as I read it. I'm messing this up here, sorry. No, it isn't at all. And it's in Luke somewhere. Someone can find it for me. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey. And then he says he's coming again. And he's coming in great power, great the word is dynamite. Dynamite power. Dynamite.
dynamite bomb. So when Jesus returns, do you know what it tells me? It tells me that the one who came and made known the Father's power, the King of the kingdom who made a show of them all openly, the one who went to the cross and did that and rose again on the third day, he says, no man taketh my life from me. I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it again. Yeah. He who had the inherent dynamic, dynamite, dynamis power in him, he says, I will raise myself again. I have the power to lay down my life. I have the power to take it away. Now, if Jesus was just a man, as many are, as we've heard even this morning, are, are trying to purport and to say that Jesus is just a man, a, 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 some sort of spiritual guru or little lamb of an offering, and that's all he is, then, brothers and sisters, we're not redeemed. Yeah. We're not reconciled back to God. Hallelujah. If Christ be not God and die for us, then you and I might as well close our Bibles and just go home and be like all men most miserable and die. Brothers and sisters, he is Amen. the almighty Amen. God in flesh. Hallelujah. He did go to the tree. Amen. He did give his life. Yes. He did lay it down of himself. He did go to the grave. He was resurrected yes. and raised himself on the third day. Hallelujah. And he has ascended into Amen. glory. He is yes. the man in the glory, the great high priest for Israel. He is the one who shows yes. his wounds and spreads his hands. Yes. And he is the one who's coming back again in great power and glory. Yes. Amen. He's coming back with dynamic, dynamite power. And he's going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Yes. Amen. That's the Christ he serves. You know the little pictures you get? The yeah. little effeminate Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hogwash. Amen. Nonsense. Amen. He was a man of men. Amen. He was a man of men. He, he took a, a, a whip and he tied the ropes and he, he whipped those old traitors out of that temple. Amen. He whipped them out and he says, Take our rottenness out of here. That's the sort of man he is. He's a man of war. And he's coming back again yes. to ruin and reign. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the idea of this is, is also that when he returns again, this, as I said, is not secret, but the heavens will roll back like a scroll. Amen. We're going to hear a, a loud shout, a voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, the, the myriads. Of, of, of the heavenly hope and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Hallelujah. you imagine that? I don't know if you have a downtown Tulsa cemetery. Yes. The dead in Christ right. will rise first. Right. There's going to be, over in Northern Ireland, there's just a couple of cemeteries around close to where we live. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Amen. We're all going to rise first. And, and that body of of, of, of decay and that body of, of, of flesh that has rot, rotted, that body is going to be called. I don't know how he's going to do it because it's not up to me. It's up to him and he's going to do it and he's going to call it back again and he's going to change it. Listen, we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord. Listen, he's going to do it as quick as that. The change... The change is in a moment. Amen. We're away in a moment. Yeah. The change will be in a moment. Yes. In the twinkling of an eye or in an atom of time. Amen. In an atom of time. What power is invested in Christ? Notice here when we go to Romans 1 and verse 16. It's, it's a well known uh, scripture. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Yeah. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news. You know, do you know what the, the, the old, uh, if I can use it, the Viking word was for it, the old um, Danes and Scandinavians call it Godspeed. I don't know if you use the word or not. Sometimes we would say 
someone's just talking about waffling. <coughs> Do you use that word? Waffling? No. Yeah. Waffling means you're rabbiting on and talking rubbish. Yeah. Or you're, you're, you're just talking for talk's sake. We would call it old waffle. And that means old rubbish you're speaking. But sometimes we'd call it, ah, you give me a whole spiel. The whole spiel. In other words, he, they run me through the whole lot. They got the whole lot, the whole spiel. Well, they called it God spiel. It was the gospel, the good news of the coming king to the kingdom of God. And that's what they, that's what we get the gospel. Notice, for I'm not ashamed. I ask you, brother or sister, are you ashamed of Christ and his God? Kingdom, salvation by grace through faith in Christ. Shame to tell your work colleagues and your workmates. And, and, and Paul says, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of Jesus, you know. Amen. I'm not ashamed of him. Amen. Not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is present tense. Not it will be, it is now. The word is that this gospel, uh, this truth, this message. Uh, the Lord Jesus, the inherent power of the Father, uh, th th this message that we hold and, and, and the gospel that we tell and preach of salvation and redemption found in Christ. And he says, I am not ashamed of it. It is the dunamis power. Amen. It is dynamite. Amen. Notice what he says. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone believeth to the the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Judaite should really be um, yeah. to the Israelite. Yeah. Notice here if I can just divert a little. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And, and notice what it says in verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. It's like Father Abraham, faith was accredited to him for righteousness. And when you and I believe our God, that is Yahweh, the one true living God, when you and I believe the Lord Jesus Christ, when we believe our God and that he has paid our debt in full, that his blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness, that we are washed, as it were, by faith in the blood of Christ, that the ransom has been found, and that you and I have been redeemed, and lost sheep have been reconciled into the fold again, then you and I are counted righteous in Christ. Amen. As I stand, I'm righteous in Christ. Found under the blood. Notice, if you will, again, we want to go off this word to the second word. And in our reading in Mark 13, verse 34, For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants. Would you say authority? authority. Is that like you believe it? I'm not closing and going home, I'm just going. <laughs> You see when we stand on that, yes. governments can crumble. Yeah. Amen. Lives can be changed. Amen. Men and women redeemed and brought into the kingdom. Yes. Salvation of the souls of men and women. Yeah. The authority, the binding and the loosing brother. The binding and the loosing is in the sense that here, with this in our hands and with this in our hearts, with us preaching in the Spirit, we have the authority. Amen. Christ has went in glory. He has given us of his Holy Spirit and Amen. the Word, and he is the Word made flesh. We have the Word in our hands, and so the Word made flesh agrees with that Word in our hands, for he is the Word of God. 
And when we preach that, people will see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Notice the authority. Brother, sister, do you believe in the authority of the word? Amen. Notice, you see, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. The word authority is the word exousia. It is also used for power. For example, if you're reading the King James Bible, you have exousia is used 103 times. That is for other English words. Let me run you through some. It's used for the word power, 69 times. Authority, in 29 places. It's used for the word right, two times. Liberty, one time. Jurisdiction, one time. Strength, one time. So when the Lord ascended into glory, and he sent forth his spirit on the 120 in the upper room, and when the Spirit came down, and those men and women were baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, they went forth, those who were cowering for fear of the Jews, with the door shut. When the Holy Ghost came, they had Holy Ghost bonus, and Amen. so they went out Amen. in the authority, the power of the Holy Ghost with the authority of the Scripture, with the authority from heaven, with the authority, listen, and by the way, the scripture was the Old Testament. Yeah. Yes. I'm a New Testament Christian. You can't be a New Testament Christian. There's no such thing. I'm a whole Testament Christian. Both Testaments. How can you know, know the new without the old? I teach our pilot all the time. Listen, you can't know the New Testament if you don't know the Old Testament. Amen. They went out with the Old Testament scripture. They went out <coughs> seeking the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hallelujah. They went out with the authority of the word that Christ hath died for you. Amen. That he shed his blood and he sends forth his spirit. Be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And oh, men and women started hearing Spirit started quickening. And men and women were born from above. Here we find <coughs> that the word authority is power, the same word they use for power. It's used 29 times. It's exousia. Here's what exousia means. So the other word, dy uh, dunamis, is where we get dynamite or to be dynamic. This word is exousia, and it means to have the right, the power, the authority, the license, the privilege. So the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. Christ ascends into glory, and he's coming back again. But in the meantime to his coming back again, in the meantime to his return, he says unto his servants, my spirit will be in you. Amen. And as my spirit is in you, my word will be in your hearts. It will be on your mouth. Uh, you don't need to call me down or think you bring me up. I will be in you and I will be with you. Amen. Yeah. And you have the authority. Yeah. Stick on to the mic. Yeah. Oh. Mountain of Washington, Mountain of Brussels, or whatever. It's time the church realized, the ecclesia realized, Amen. the body of Christ realized, he's still the head. Yes. We are the body. Amen. It's time we walked up and down the kingdom Amen. as Christ did, preaching. Kingdom. He 
healing the sick. Baptizing, that is, seeking the Lord for that. Baptizing in the Holy Ghost. Until the King comes again. I believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. You know, some people say Jesus Christ the same, and they, it becomes one of those verses, you know, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. Yeah. Doesn't it? No, they just sort of willy nilly, you know, they, they, they rhyme, rhyme it off the top of their head and through their tongue. Yes, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. I know, I know, no, that's not the way it is in Scripture. No. That's not what it means. Hallelujah. Listen, and there's a little word there that most people, even when they slow down, by the way, can everyone still understand me okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I forget to slow down. There's a guy last year when we, he was watching this, the, the videos after we had got home and he came to me and he says, I really enjoyed, he says, watching the, the conference. It was online. I says, good. He says, but I had a good laugh at you. I said, why? He says, because we talked so fast back home, he said you were talking really slow. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same. Some people go the same yesterday, today. That's not the way it reads. Yeah. Yesterday and yeah. and today and forever. Yeah. It, it's elevated. This yeah. is the way it goes. It, yeah. it, it, it's emphasized. Yeah. It's enlarged that you would get it into your head and heart. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. This Jesus we read of. This Jesus. We would see Jesus. He says he's the same. The same Jesus who had the dynamic power, who had that inherent, that the Father has in him, yeah. is now ascended into glory and has sent down his spirit and says Jesus Christ the same yesterday on today. That's the way it reads. Yeah. That's the way the original text reads. Yeah. You know why? Because you and I forget it. Yeah. Jesus Christ is same yesterday and today and forever. Yeah. That's the way it reads. Yeah. He is the eternal. Amen. Away with this, he's a man. Away with this, he's just a flesh and blood man. Away with it, brothers and sisters. Yeah. He is the eternal, wrapped in flesh, oh, deity clothed in humanity, who sends forth his own divine spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Notice, let me give you some examples of this. Exousia. I'll read it out, and it's in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. We have that great commission. Jesus yes. said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Ah, oh, you see, he's just a man. Yes, of course he's a man. As a man, he's given all power. As God, he is the power. Yes. Listen, who did Jesus pray to? And we prayed to himself. Flesh to deity. Yeah. Father to son. Or born son to the father. Yeah. Listen. O oh, thy, let answer his prayer. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Yeah. Yeah. As the psalmist said. <coughs> Notice this. All power is given unto me. All exousia, all authority. Why? Because as a man, as a man, he shed his blood. As a man, he died on the tree. As a man, he was raised from the dead. As a man, he ascended into glory. And as a man, he stands in the glory. Seating for us as our great high priest. Hallelujah. And listen, as a man, bodily, physically, visibly, yeah. we will see Jesus. Amen. He's coming again. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming again. 
For example, in Acts chapter 13 to 20, Paul is giving his testimony of his conversion. Acts 26. And verse 18, if you will, just for time's sake. And when you read the, the verse before, it says that Paul is to deliver the Gentiles. You know, that, that's it. To go to the nations, but really, yeah. that's the lost sheep. Oh, uh, um, that's another story for another time. You, you guys know what that means. Yeah. Notice verse 18, you open their eyes. And many, many blinded eyes are out there today. You open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So the Lord said that to Paul. Notice to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. The power of Satan. It, it isn't the word dunamis because then that would mean Satan has this inherent dynamite power like the Father has. So he hasn't. He hasn't. And the idea of this is the power is the exousia. To turn them from darkness to light, from the power, the exousia of Satan, or the, the right, the privilege, the license, the authority that Satan has been given. So Paul, go you forward. You preach and redeem them. Amen. Through the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Take the authority from the devil. Amen. Yes. In, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And, uh, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. And the word quickened is it's a wheel which actually gives the idea of um, to reanimate. Yeah. So, you know, one of maybe, you know, when you were younger, you used to watch the cartoons, mm. animation, yeah. little, or even maybe you got a book, you know, you draw a little stick man, so he's like this, <laughs> and then next thing, the stick man, you him turn like this, and then a leg goes, and an arm goes, and your leg, you know, and when you flick the pages, they all yeah. have to remember the mics over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's animation, isn't it? Yes. See, Adam and Adam kind died spiritually, then of course physically started to die. Died. He died. He died. He didn't just hurt his wee pinky finger and say, Well, that's enough for me, as one preacher said. No, he died before God. Yes. So he took on his genes. In fact, let's turn to Ephesians 2 to show you something. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So the word here, uh, the, the word here for, for uh, quickened, as I said, it, it's a boil. It gives the idea to re, not to animate, but to reanimate. <laughs> so he has to make alive and reanimate back into reconciled union with himself, that is with God, that which once was alive and animated with him. Yeah. The Lord walked with Adam. The voice of the Lord came and walked with Adam in the cool of the day. And that was gone. Adam died. Then Christ comes, the second or the last Adam. And all in Christ then, because of what he has done and all he has accomplished, he reanimated that man which was dead. Yeah. He reanimates us. How? By the quickening power of the Holy Ghost of our day in Amen. the lives of men and women. Amen. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. When time passed, ye walked according to the course of this word. And the word according is the word kata, means to dominate, to, to press down. In other words, when someone or something is dominating, <coughs> governments are dominating. The, the, the one worlders are dominating. Uh, the global elitists are dominating. And all the, uh, the, the bankers are dominating. They're dominating the world system of things. Uh, the course of this world. 
We walked in it. Hallelujah. We were in darkness, but the Lord has died for us and risen again. And he sent forth his word in power, authority. And you and I have had our eyes open, taken from darkness uh, into light. And we're reanimated in Christ. Uh, who do I make myself more reverent than others? <clears throat> Get excited. Oh, what a glorious redemption. Alive in Christ. Alive in Christ. One of your life, church. Is your heart alive in Christ? Have you been quickened? Quickened by the Holy Ghost. Amen. According to the course or the dominance of the course of this word, according to the spirit that now worketh, this, worketh in the children of disobedience or the impersuadable, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, the lust of the flesh, of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. The word nature, you can underline it, it's the word fusis. Do you know what it means? We were by lineal descent. That's the word means. We were by germination. So I have my children who are of my blood. My descendants. And sometimes they act like me. <laughs> There's one in particular, Allison says, it's just like her daddy. And once he claims it's just like her mommy. They may even look like us. Allison prayed hard that the one that looked like me would start changing. <laughs> I don't fuss on him preparatory prayer or not, but that's just... <laughs> How about genes? Yes, yes. She's a flesh. Amen. And, by the way, Allison's been coughing. She's not sick. It's just some... She takes a tickly cough when uh, there's air condition and things like that. So even in the car, she would take it. So. But if she had a, a flu and I was sitting beside her, I might ask her to move her brother down. I asked her to move down the, and over the next one beside her brother down. So as I don't get it. I'm only joking, Dan. You see, because you catch the germs, isn't that right? So, so from lineal descendant from Adam, or lineal descending from Adam, we were dead. We caught his germs of all that he had done. So we were dead before God. We were we were unreconcilable to ourselves or, or from ourselves toward God and it took a sovereign move of God himself in other words he came down and done it all Amen. he done it all Amen. I chose Jesus piffle and waffle poppycock <laughs> I, sorry I don't mean to offend but I chose Jesus not in your Nelly no way how can the dead choose anything? Yeah, right. Amen. 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 <laughs> and so it is that he has done it all. Amen. Thank God. Jesus had it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it by the snow. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful Savior, isn't he? Amen. Notice the Fusus was in ours, but God, who is rich in mercy. That just makes me want to pause for a moment. Mm -hmm. The difference between grace and mercy? The difference in Grace is simply termed as to receive that which we do not deserve. Mm -hmm. Unmerited favor. To receive that which we do not deserve, that's grace. Mm -hmm. What is mercy? Simply, to not receive what we do deserve. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So I received that which I did not deserve. 
backstreet Belfast boy in trouble, arrested for the first time at 12 years of age, then 14 years of age, then 17 years of age, then 21 years of age, and in court four times. A Belfast boy growing up with uh, nothing but trouble, with uh, his dad's car being blown to bits with us, hide, having to hide from terrorists, and, and, and getting involved in violence and trouble all my days, and alcoholism and drug addiction, but Jesus came and he had my debt, uh, and he set me free. Amen. What a Christ we serve. Amen. Am I right for a while? Notice says here, God is rich in mercy. I deserved, I deserved to die of my sin. Yeah. But don't ask me why. Mm. I don't know. But he opened my eye to behold the Lamb. Mm. He opened my eyes to behold that we're in darkness and blind, to behold the Christ he bled and died for me. Hallelujah. And he drew me by his spirit and made me alive. Dead to God and he made me alive. Notice what God is rich in mercy or wealthy in the sphere of his mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, so he ascends into heaven and he gives authority to his servants. It's time the church started to learn that the ecclesia, the called out, started to learn of the authority of God. Amen. The authority of the scripture. Let me go on just briefly. So he's taken us from darkness to light. We were dead. Let me give you an example. So what's this? I'll put that there. I see this? Move yourself. Go. <laughs> of who you are. He says because of who I am. Amen. Notice Revelation 12. And I heard pardon me, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, the power or the exousia of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. The kingdom of our God and the, the power of his Christ is anointed. The exousia, the authority that's in Christ. When we go to Revelation 12, we know the woman is carried into the wilderness. Brother, uh, Pastor Ron mentioned last night, um, Jeremiah 31, mm -hmm. and talked about those who have escaped of the sword or received grace in the wilderness. I think it's 31 and 1 or verse 2. Verse 1 or verse 2. Jeremiah 31. And when you read that last night, found grace in the wilderness. My heart leapt within me. I think of the 
think of how Israel dead estranged from their husband divorced scattered and thought of the wilderness going west what is known as Europe Babylon as we spoke of coming after the dragon coming to destroy the, the seed of the woman thought about it thought about it and I could see it how even to this day it still happens still try yeah. thought of Hosea chapter 2 and the Lord says and I to, to the house of the northern kingdom of Israel, I, I will allure her. Amen. Bring her into the wilderness. And I will speak comfortable words. Amen. To a rotten, filthy heart. A, a, an adulterous wife who, uh, reading Proverbs 31 this morning, Pastor Ramsey read it, and, and we mentioned it again about a woman who's praised, a, a, a godly woman. This woman is uh, praises far beyond rubies. Her husband's heart can trust in her. You know, the father's heart, or God's heart, couldn't trust in her. And off she goes into the wilderness and lost, scattered, dead, helpless, hopeless. He had every right every right to let us go yes. and never to speak again until judgment would be meted out yeah. every right justified to do it yeah. but he found a way by keeping his own righteous law yeah. listen see if Jesus isn't God Israel isn't redeemed amen yeah. Right. Amen. Because he died to keep his own law. Amen. The husband died to read the truth. Amen. And if he's not God, then we're not reading the truth. Right. And he goes into the wilderness and I will uh, it's grace in the wilderness. Thank God for his grace. Do you know do you know what grace the word caris, you know where it comes from? I, I, I'm going to try and wrap this up in another five minutes. Is that okay? Can I get five minutes? I'm going to use your line. Is that all? Well, just five. Is that what it was? Just five. I go, <laughs> the word grace means. The word caris. And it was used in the, the, the Greeks used it for. Um, it is to receive something you don't deserve in unmerited favour. It is all of that. But the ancient Greeks used it for a sign. So you would walk down through, say, Athens. And there would be an orator and you stopped and you heard his great oratory speech. And you, you received something from it. You thought, wow. Or, or a philosopher speaking and, uh, and you would have learned something from the philosophy and it was for free. Or they used it for, say, you go and you, you're, you're maybe stressful at work and Say you, you would go to a holiday and in your first day you realize no work for two weeks and, or whatever and, and you realize you're, there's no problems, no stress and you can turn off your phone and, and all of those things. And, uh, and if you're a pastor, it's few and far between to turn off your phone, by the way, but it happens the odd time. And, and that, my phone isn't even off over here. But you know that time when you just realize and it's all just drains off and maybe it's a nice day good temperature and the, the wind's blowing the grass and maybe you're on the hill overlooking the sea and it's glimmering and glistering and, and you just feel it oh there's a property in all of this that costs you nothing yeah. that was Karis yeah. that's the idea of it yeah. and the scripture says Jesus was full of grace So when we're saved by grace, there's a property in that salvation is for nothing. Does something to the soul. 
throw something to the heart. And Israel are in the wilderness. Uh, God has allured us, Hosea too, has allured her into the wilderness. Dead, lifeless, hopeless, waiting for final damnation and judgment and all of those things. Just dead to God, like brute beast animals. That's all it really was because we're flesh and blood. But yeah. God remembered his covenant with Abraham. Hallelujah. And he sent forth his son to die. Yes. And the word went forth in power from 120 in the upper room we were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's called comfortable words. There's nothing more comforting than to know that Christ has paid your debt. Amen. Amen. One scripture. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. All that wickedness will be cast into a lake of fire. Whether that's literal or whatever you, Ali got up to you. Now, I'm not arguing with you over it. That's going to happen. This is what I want you to see. Let your eye run down to verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. We spoke of the first resurrection earlier when the dead in Christ shall rise. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first. Notice, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Let your eye run right down, please. Verse 12, this is at the great white throne, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell, or the grave, gave up the dead which were in it, in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell, or the grave, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So according to according to the scripture here, the lake of fire is a second death. And according to this in in, in verse six, blessed and holy as he had had part in the first resurrection on sac on such notice the second death hath no power. Amen. And let me finish with this thought. The second death hath no power. The great white throne judgment. The lake of fire, whatever way you want to term that for you, I leave that with you. But the second death, the lake of fire, hath no power. Amen. So following the exousia trail is this, uh, that the second death hath no power, no exousia. So those of us who have been in the resurrection because of what we have heard today, because of what Christ has done, for he has paid our debt, his spirit has sent forth into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, we have trusted in the finished work of the blood of the Lamb. It hath no right. The second death has no privilege. It has no license. It has no authority over you and I. We will be our brothers and sisters. Uh, we will be... Kings and priests ruling and ruling with our God. Amen. Amen. All because the Father came to save the unsavable, to redeem the unredeemable, to reach the unreachable, to help the helpless. And he came to touch those who could not be touched. And he came to take us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. He came to reanimate us, to make us alive unto himself, uh, that you and I would have the authority that the ascended Christ has given us in our hands, our hearts, through the Spirit, and we must go forth with every man his own work to do it until Christ returns again. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen.